What's up guys, Shane here at 3D Printing and today we're checking out the GTEC A10 3D Printer. Welcome back guys. So I'm here in my new space for now. Uh, it's a little cramped, but hey, we will get through this. And um, since I just moved, I'm in a brand new place now. I've sipped a few printers here and GTEC contacted me over the summer and said, hey, we'd like to send you the A10 to check out. I said, sure, uh, send it over and I'll get it. Well, it just arrived yesterday and now we're gonna go ahead and see what this thing's all about. I don't really know much about it. I think it's following kind of like Creality's uh, deal on what they're doing with all their different printers. So I'm kind of expecting this to be, I don't know if calling it a Creality clone is a proper thing, but I don't know. We'll see anyways what actually this is. Okay, so now that we're in the box, let's see what we got. So right here on top of the GTEC A10 3D printer quick start guide, Gives you a packing list, uh, assembly instructions, and the wiring of how to do it, and what to do to get printing. I think this is kind of off of the Ender 3, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it's very similar to that one. And again, this is kind of how printers are coming nowadays, is they are mostly mostly assembled. They come in about maybe three to four pieces. Um, it's just so much easier now, I guess, for them to assemble things, and this labor's cheap in China, so I mean, why not? So, yeah, here's the bottom plate. Oh, and it's using this. Okay, so it has the GTEC Super Plate, which is a direct, again, I don't know if calling it a knockoff is the proper thing, but it is apparently supposed to be very, very similar to the Anycubic Ultra Base, which is amazing. And if this is anything like that, I will be thoroughly impressed because that is an awesome print service to use. Right, what else we have in here? Oh, here's the... Front control panel right here, it's all, you know, steel or aluminum. So it's a pretty solid feeling to it. All right, got the second layer. And here comes a couple of the pieces. So here are the power supply. Oh, and look at this. It has a fully enclosed power supply here, which is absolutely excellent. They're using XT60 connectors, which is also great. A fuse plug. I tell you, GTEC has come such a far way since my first GTEC, the Aluminum i3 I got over two years ago, almost, yeah, two and a half years ago now, I got that. So quite the difference there, and I will need to change this down to 110, or 115, because that's what I have in this country, it's awesome. All right, we've got a power plug. We have a giant bag of accessories. It's got some sample filament in there, spool holder, which is exactly like what Crowdy is using, that kind of like tube that uh, screws on to it. Um, got a SD card in there, lots of goodies. Uh, oh, they give you a mouse pad. That's kind of funny. There's a little mouse pad for you. And we'll put that to the side. All right, now we gotta get out the gantry. All right, and here's the gantry. So let me just get the box out of the way here. Okay, and here we go. So it's a single lead screw. Uh, it's using a you know general MK8, MK9 extruder on there, Bowden setup with a little aluminum plate that they use. So that is one nice thing about when GTEC does do these, they use an aluminum uh, interfacing plate between the extruder and the Bowden tube, I guess way to say it. Lots of them out there, they kind of just screw right into the plastic of it. This, they kind of use that. So it's a very secure connection. You don't have to worry about this like popping out, uh, which I have seen them stripped out of other people. They've kind of ranked it down too much. Uh, let's see here, the, uh, the cooling fan is here on the side. It does have a, a part cooling fan with a duct that goes right onto the hot in there. It is a, you know, MK, or it's like a uh, E3D knockoff, you know. It's got the captive uh, nut up in there for this to have some play to it. Big plate here, very interesting. And uh, they're using a, so using like a uh, Molex style connector, kind of like when you have like a modular power supply, how it interfaces. That's the exact type of plug they're using on this. And it's one cable for the extruder and the hot end and all that, which is nice. That's pretty good. Let's set this down and let's make some space here. Now on pretty much all of these uh, printers, they're using the 2040 
for the uprights and 2040 for the downrights. Uh, this is actually 40, 40. Let's, let's look at this right here. They're using 40, 40 aluminum down here. That is very different than anything I've seen. Again, if other people are using that, so be it. I have not seen that yet. And uh, the sticker on this is kind of crappy. But either way, they're using two bolts in the bottom of the 2040 going through whatever the bottom gantry is using. And that's giving you just your basic connection. And then most of them have T-plates that go beside that. So here are very long bolts for that. Here's our spool holder parts, a one gig SD card, the uh, USB cable, our sample filament, and then we have a bunch of other hardware here. I'm not sure what this stuff's here for yet. Uh, we have more parts for the uh, spool holder, and then we have more screws, zip ties for cable management, and then here we have a bunch of uh, accessories that we're going to need and they give you two wrenches one wrench to hold the heater block and a second wrench to grab onto your nozzle and give that a twist off they do give you an extra 0.4 millimeter nozzle with it which is not too bad either all right so per the instructions uh, we're going to use these four to connect this uh, a bunch of other ones are power supply so there's power supply mounts to this as well and these all have a lock washer on them to try and help them stay in there now you can use the Allen wrenches they give you. I prefer not to. I have this little uh, Pittsburgh Pro kit that I got at Harbor Freight, which is an excellent purchase because Allen wrenches really aren't great for using on 3D printers. I mean, they work, but uh, they need to have like a ball head on them to make them really efficient for you. Uh, okay, so let's get this back here. Front of the printers that way. So we're going to put this up like so. I find it easier this way for me to assemble a lot of these. I'll just get them started and then finish it off. Oh, let's do it this way. It's a very small printer. You can kind of manhandle it around a little bit to make life a little bit easier. With the big printers, it's easy to hang it off of your desk and then go through and Put these in from underneath but because the footprint of this printer is so small i mean it's awesome the electronics are housed right here underneath which i've been groaning about for so long because it's ridiculous how they either attach them to the the gantry you know because you're gonna add stress that doesn't need to be there or they're using those extra control boxes which take up real estate that they really shouldn't be printers should have been having this housed underneath for a long time. It's completely shielded as well. So there's a nice, a uh, lot of ventilation on the board. Looks to be using the GT2560 board. Um, I only know that because it's white and it pretty much matches the footprint of the one that I have. Uh, it has rubber feet on it. Uh, kind of forgiving rubber a little bit there, but it's still rubber feet. All right, let's flip this back around carefully. Okay. Now going back here, let's look at the directions here again. Uh, now we need to fasten on the, uh, okay, yeah. So the front plate of this 4040 has nothing on it because that is where this connects using 10 millimeter screws for these two button heads. Okay, uh, now we can do the power supply which is using Take down the left blue strip. So this one, oh, they have it already pre-cut in there. If you'd be able to pull it out easier. And there's the two holes we need. I think we're gonna use these ones right here. That matches power supply. And it's going right into the holes that are in the power supply. Which make it super easy. All right, there's that. Now we just stick the blue racing stripes back in. And you can just see the bolts right through there. That's okay. All right, now that's in. Uh, spool holder, put that on real quick. Again, it's just the piece of PVC pipe that's threaded. And I have these two plastic nuts that go on it. I don't like these because for 
Now they're less common now, but the thicker, fatter spools don't interface well with these. Uh, they're like the short stubby rules. So like I said, Robo 3D, I think still uses them. My stock that I got from them was older. So it might not be true in, you know, August of 2018. But uh, I have had issues, so I usually just, they have 3D print, printed replacements for these. You can look at any of the Creality ones will have it. It's not a big deal. Uh, okay, so we have that. And they want this to go like this. So the thing is a nice flow right into your extruder, which is really good to see. Some tiny M3s with T-nuts. And this will lock on very easily. Some people say this in, this induces more wiggle to your gantry. I have not noticed that. Um, I have the Tiwa Tornado down here, and uh, in the corner you can see the spool holder, it's orange, and that's mounted to the top. I have never seen any wobble been induced because of that. I was a skeptic for a long time about that, but it has no effect on it that's a whatsoever. All right, and there that is, uh, and I was mistaken, they are not using T-plates on this printer, um, which again, they probably went and found out that it doesn't really add too much stability to it. I guess decide for yourself what you think about that. Uh, that's all done. Okay, now the wiring. Uh, so obviously the PTFE tube needs to plug into the extruder there, like so. Very quick and easy. Connect the cable to the LCD. So it's just actually a ribbon cable, shielded, Again, good, but a single ribbon cable that goes into this sucker, which I don't know why they didn't have you do this ahead of time. Uh, this seems a little strange. Maybe that's it. We'll find out we fire it up. That's a little harder than I was anticipating. All right, so we gotta connect the power cable here. So it's the 6060 over here. Connect those up. Oh, we're gonna need some snips. So here we have the Y motor. We have the Z motor. Very short cabling because it has not have that far to go. And here we have again the gantry and everything. All right, let's, let's turn it around. As many stats on the printer. I don't even know how big the print area is on this thing. Well, we'll try a print, and I guess I'll look into it whenever I, uh, while I'm waiting for it to print. I can tell you, as it looks to be about what 200 by 200, and it looks like it can get all of it. Let's see if we pop smoke. Ooh, fans are loud. All right, this is going to be super awkward because my cable here is so doggone short see if I have a longer one but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and level the bed but look in here real quick there is a fan that is pulling air into this bottom containment here um, this is where the board is and just have all the drivers and everything down in there so it's blowing straight into there so it's actually oh, so the build the build size is 220 by 220 by 260 so larger than most i3s out there um, you can do 220 it's 360 watt power supply, manufactured in 2018. It weighs seven kilograms. It can print PLA, um, but it does have a heated bed. So you probably could print something else. Um, I am not sure what the uh, limitations of this GTEC super plate are, but I will tell you that this is using a four point leveling system with very, very small knobs. So hopefully it's not too hard to uh, level. And I don't know if their glue on here is as good or is like the AnyCubic one. So let me get this leveled and we'll come right back and see how things are going. All right, well, the, uh, it is a little bit loud from the fans, so I apologize for that. Uh, but it took a little time, but I finally got the bed level. I did have to move the Z end stop a little bit to get that working. So let's go ahead and get out sample filament, which is nothing to write home about. It's just some blue PLA. This looks like you could mount a filament sensor or something on here because uh, there's a hole pre-drilled in, like there's this extra tongue and it's pre-drilled. It looks like something else should go there, but there's nothing, I mean, there's nothing else here in the kit at least that goes there. Um, they do also give you a full set of spare uh, backup screw kit. 
you can probably reassemble the whole thing with these. There's a whole ton of screws in there. So, okay, let's see what's on the uh, SD card. So, print from card, A10 dog. Let's go ahead and see what happens. All right, well, it took almost two hours and it's just finished up now. I let the uh, printer cool down. Before I get to that, uh, this is how much filament was left before I paused the print and swapped out with a full roll. So this is filaments.ca uh, PLA because I got up there, I was like, well, you know, maybe they actually did for once send enough filament to cover the test print. Yeah, no, that was wrong. I've never received, I think ever, enough filament that actually finishes out the test print. I mean, Crowdy sends that little small spool, but all these ones, they always send sample filament, but it's never enough to get the sample print done. Anyways, um, it's done. Let's see how easy this is to take off. That's it. Um, actually, I'm a little bit impressed with the first layer on this. Um, I, I had that set pretty doggone close and uh, it worked to work out perfectly. And here's the rest, pops right off. So this does work so far, seemingly just like the Anycubic Ultra Base. So that's nice to see. Good first layer on that. Uh, the print quality on this is pretty good. Uh, even me pausing it there uh, worked out well. Overhangs, not too bad. There's a little blob under his chin and that's actually where I had swapped out the filament because this doesn't really have like a filament change on it. It was just, I hit pause, I hurried up, pulled out the old filament, pushed the new one in, pushed a little bit extra out. I tried to get it, I was in the middle, like of the middle of the infill, somewhere in the middle of the model. You know, it never works out the way you want it to, but either way, you know, I can't uh, go wrong. It is a little weird that there is this catching. That well, seems to work itself out now, but there was definitely, it definitely would catch in certain places. And uh, that seems to have worked out, but we'll see how, you know, a month or two of this works out before I actually do a review of the unit. But it did print out of the box. That's good to see. Leveling was a little tough. I will need to upgrade the springs on this because the springs are pretty bad. Uh, this side is very low. This side is very high. I tried adjusting the gantry to see if it was skewed. It doesn't seem to be. Again, it's just really hard to tell. I need to get a, a ruler or something to try and check that out to be sure of what's going on. All right, I'm gonna wrap this up now. This is the GTEC A10. It was sent to me by GTEC directly. So I thank them for giving the opportunity to try this out. So far, it seems like a relatively solid machine. Uh, a couple things here and there I would like to see changed, but they have made drastic improvements in their machines since previous times that I've, all the ones I've received. And other things, like I said, I believe this is gonna be their competitor to the Ender 3 from Creality. I don't know how close they are. I don't have an Ender 3 to try out, so I can't really say uh, much about the comparison, but uh, for build size and how it looks and seems, seems to be pretty close to that. So yeah, thanks for watching guys. If you guys enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If not, thumbs down. Either way, talk in the comments down below. I want to hear from you guys. Again, sorry about how the my little studio here is a little weird right now, so kind of bear with me until I get myself set up. If you guys want to stay with tune what's going on, especially when I put out new content, make sure you become a subscriber, hit that bell icon. You'll get a notification anytime I upload new content. If you guys want to support me financially down below, there's a couple links. You can do a one-time deal. You can come a Patreon. My patrons are awesome. They're still supporting me all this time. So thank you guys for your support. That way you can donate me uh, on a monthly basis. Or you can use any of my affiliate links down below. And feel free to do your daily shopping of those. Update your bookmarks. A little slice of what you buy through those vendors comes here to help me out the channel. And I appreciate anything you guys do. Even if it is watch a video and let the ads play. Thanks for watching, guys. Until next time, happy printing.